Hi hey everybody, it's me, Valerie, the Crafty Val Girl. Today I'm going to show you how to make these rosettes. I'm going to show you two different ways. A lot of people do not have a scoring board. So I'm going to show you a way where you can make these without having to purchase a scoring board. It takes a little while longer, but they turn out quite well if you have difficulty making them because um, you don't have a scoring board. I'll show you how to get it all figured out, okay? All right, so what you're going to need is you're going to need two pieces of paper that is 12 inches in length by whatever width you desire. Uh, the smaller the width, the smaller your rosette will be. The wider your width, of course, the bigger they will be. There's a smaller one versus a larger one, okay? So just kind of play around with the width that you like. Uh, as you're making them and see which one is your favorite. Okay, so you'll need two pieces, 12 inches long by whatever width you desire. You'll need a marking pen or pencil. You'll need some kind of scoring tool. I just have one of these cross stitch needles or embroidery needle. It has a dull tip. You don't want something that's going to press through the paper easily. Um, whatever you can find to use. Use a... Uh, ballpoint pen if you don't mind marks being on the back of your paper you can mark your paper it doesn't really matter just something that you're going to be able to manually score with you'll need a ruler you'll need um some one and a half or two inch circles or one inch circles whatever size circle punch you have if you don't have a punch go ahead and just hand cut yourself some circles out it's going to be on the back so that doesn't have to be super accurate so and you're going to need some glue paper glue, and you're going to need a hot glue gun. Okay, so let's get all of this out of my way. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do uh, one without the scoring board. A lot of people don't have a scoring board, and they can be kind of expensive for some. So what we're going to do, I already have one of these finished, so I'm going to show you, okay. I don't know if you can see on here or not, I already have this scored. What you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler, okay, and you're going to lay it down across your edge, and you're going to mark every half an inch. Scooch this over here a little bit so you can see. On both sides, you'll mark a half an inch mark all the way across both edges of your paper, okay, on the back side. This isn't going to be seen, so it's not very important. Now to score this, we're going to lay our ruler down here, and we're going to line each side up on those marks, and we're going to give it a good press with our pen. I'm going to use the ink pen just so that you can see. Just give it a good press, and that's going to kind of score that paper. You can't really see it all the way through, but if you give it a good press, it's going to give a nice indent on that line. I'm going to do a couple of them with the ink pen. Press down pretty pretty good. You don't want to press all the way through the paper, but give it a good press. If you're on one of these cutting mats, it's uh, good because it has a little give to it. Um, if you feel like your tabletop surface is too hard to get a, a nice score line on your paper, um, put several book pages underneath here or even a magazine, and that'll give some cushion where you can score your line. Now the rest of them I'm going to do with this needle here. Just give it a good press. Line your lines up, give it a good press. Now you can do this every quarter of an inch or every three-fourths of an inch. It depends on how tall you want your um, your rosette. Let me see if I've got... This one here is done with a quarter inch scores and this one is done with half inch scores quarter inch half inch this is a bit more difficult to put together the half inch one is my favorite uh so but just to give you the example okay so let's continue scoring here now i prefer doing this with a cardstock weight of paper um i think you get a crisper rosette you can use decorative papers. Um, I feel that they're a little bit more difficult to make. 
I like the sturdiness of the cardstock. Okay, let's just keep scoring. Almost done. Just a few more here. Whoops, that one was a little wonky. Let's do that one again. You might want to weight this down with something so it don't move around on you. Last one. Okay, so now we have both of our pieces are scored. You can kind of see how that looks. Okay. All right, now we're gonna have one upside down and one, one right side up. We're going to, with the first one, bend your end down and just keep, go ahead and bend them back and forth. Now you see they're not gonna be real even right here just yet. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Okay. Don't squeeze this real tight yet. Don't don't really score them lines too much. Put it between your fingers. Kind of give it a little back and forth zhuzh until they kind of line up a bit better. Okay. Until they're more straight across. And then give that end a good pinch. Okay. And turn it over. And this other side is going to be a little wonky too. Just give it kind of a little back and forth zhuzh until you kind of kind of get it where you want it. And then give it a good press and then press it all the way across. Okay, so you're going to have what looks like this with this fold on this particular one in an upward fashion. So the first, our first bend is a V. Okay. Now on this, and you'll know what I mean, On uh, the next one is going to be pointing the opposite direction. Okay, so we've got this one. Again, our V is going towards me or upwards. Now with this one, what you want, you want exactly the opposite. So we're going to point this, this one down. So our V is going to be an upside down V. So this one we have there, the regular V. And on this one, it's pointing toward me to be an upside down V. Continue folding this one just like we did the other. Okay. All right, again, the same thing. And give that a little zhuzh back and forth until it's a bit more even across the top. And give it a good pinch. Flip it over. Same thing with this side. This side's a little more even. Kind of rock it back and forth a little bit till, you, till it kind of gets where you want it. And give it a good pinch. I'll pinch it all the way across. Okay. Okay, so here's the top and here's the top of this one. When I stand them up, you can see the difference in the way they're folded. Okay. Right side up V, upside down V. Okay. So now we're going to attach these. So bring them end to end. We've got our right side up V. This is where we're going to put our glue on this very end flap here. Okay, now we're going to take this one with our upside down V and we're going to overlap it. Just glue that together. Match your edges up nice. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with the other ends. Our, our right side up V is here. We're going to put glue on this flap. Overlap it. 
Be sure your sides match up. If one side juts out just a little bit more, we're not going to worry about that too much because we'll make that the center of our rosette, and that's going to be hidden by any embellishments that you're going to put on the top. Okay. If it's off a little bit, like that one is there, you can kind of see it sticks out just a little bit there. Don't worry about that. Okay. It's not going to be that big a deal. Just be sure that your top side is even. Okay. Okay. Now, the side that I'm going to put up toward me is the side that's a little bit longer or the side that's going to be the inside of the rosette. Okay. Again. All right. Now, the next step. Now, this is where, you know, it gets a little sticky because we get out the hot glue and I always burn myself. I'm going to put a really generous amount of hot glue on one side of this circle with a great big dollop in the middle. Quite a lot of glue. Okay. Right, I'm gonna set that down. I'm going to push my center down. Kind of get a hold of it with my hand really good here. Okay. Put your hand, my hand, whoops. I want to flip it over. We want this on the back side. If you have double-sided paper, that would not be a horrible mistake, but. Okay. Carefully pick up your glued dot. Press it right down on the center. Press it in there really good. Be careful because some of these hot glue guns are hot, and that's a pretty hot piece of paper right there. But kind of push that in toward the center and kind of hold that center down for just a minute until that glue kind of cools and starts to harden just a little bit. Okay, at this point, you can turn it over. Now with these larger ones, if, you're, um, if your cardstock is not a super heavy duty cardstock that you're using on the back, this can kind of flex a little bit. So in that center, I like to take, open it up just a little bit, kind of give it a little bend, and put just a little extra hot glue. And then kind of close and open that, and that will kind of distribute the glue onto all of the edges of the inside there. Now just hold it down. I'm going to put just a little more glue in there. I like to kind of fill that little center hole up. It's not going to show. Eventually you're going to be putting your embellishments on the top of here. Um, so any of that glue that's in there is not going to show. Now we're just going to let it close, let it, let it cool. I get, give it a good, um, air here so that it will cool down. I blow on it. I have a very hot glue gun, a high temp glue gun, so it's very hot. All right, so there you go. And that one is, um, that one's made completely without a scoreboard. Okay. Now let's make one with the scoreboard. Okay, get my scoreboard out here. I don't have very much room on my desk this evening. It's a mess. It needs to be cleared off. But, okay. All right, we're going to put our paper down uh, with the right side of your paper to the scoreboard. And we're going to score at every half an inch. And eleven and a half. Okay, now with my second piece, be sure I got the right one. The same width. Again, you can do this on the quarter of an inch 
Um, and I like the way it looks. Um, but it's a lot harder to manage. It's a lot harder to get them even. Um, it's a lot harder to, to do. They're, it's doable. Um, I just don't like the way they look quite as good. Okay. So we've got both of those. This one's directional, so I want to be sure everything's going the same direction. This one I'm going to fold up. And then get everything bent into place here on my score lines. You can see with the scoreboard, it's a little bit more even than the other one was. Um, but that's not always the case. It doesn't always turn out that way. Okay, kind of get it where we want to and give it a good pinch. Flip it over. The side's fairly even as well. So give it a little back and forth zhuzh there. If you got to go back and give it a little, another little tweak, go ahead and do that. And then give it a good press together. Okay. All right, and this, this one we folded up. So this one we're going to fold down. Whoops. <laughs> this one wants to get away from me. Okay, see this one's a little more wonky, so we're gonna kind of give it a little, little back and forth zhuzh. Then pinch, whoops, kind of. Again, if you gotta do it a couple of times, just kind of take your time with it, kind of get it where you want it. All right, there we go. So this one is our right side up V and our upside down V. Get our glue. Come over here to the end. This flap right here. That's where we want our glue. And this end. Let's see, I'll turn it around this way. Because our pineapple will match up a little better. Pinch that together really good. Yeah. Right there's, there's where, where we glued. Okay, we're gonna flip it over. This is the one we're gonna glue this time. And over the top there. See, that one matches up a little better from side to side, a little more accurate. Okay, got that part done. Now we'll take our circle. Generous amount of glue in the middle, a little all the way around. Very hot. I don't know if you can see the steam on that or not, but that's really hot. Okay, now we want to the... Um, Back side of our rosette showing up. Kind of get a hold of that in your hand there a little bit. Pick up your circle very carefully. Center it on there. Press it down really good. Don't burn yourself. You may need to kind of move this around a little bit to be sure all your little spacing is even. You don't want it like skinny and wonky like that all shoved together on one side and wide open on the other. So kind of be sure everything's spaced evenly. Okay. All right. Be sure you're kind of pressing that in all the time too because it's it wants to expand. So be sure you're constantly kind of pressing that inward. Okay. Again, you can see how it kind of wants to, you know, open up a little bit. Put a little glue in there. And a little hole down there. Kind of move it around a little bit. Open it up. Be sure you get glue all over 
all of the edges in there. And by opening it and closing it up a little bit, it kind of spread that glue around a little bit. Now I'll just kind of hold it in place until it cools. There's a little bubble of glue on the top. I don't know if you can see. See how there's a little bubble of glue on the top there? When that cools down enough, you can take that right off of there. Okay. Do not do that until your glue glue until your glue cools down enough where you know you can handle that without getting burned. That leaves plenty of glue in the center and it will hold everything more in place. Okay. There you go. Rosettes. Now you can make them even if you don't have a scoring board. All right. God bless you and happy rosette making. Bye.